So, hi everyone. We are the financial working group. Actually, two of us are rather new to this, me and Daniele. So, these are the members of, that are currently active in the group. It's Daniele, David, Roman, Ike, me, and Marta, who's not here. Now, a few words about our mission and goals. Uh, one of the basic things that the financial core working group is uh, aiming at is supporting the KDE EV board on all the things that have to do with financial issues. We, we work together with the treasurer <laughs> to propose financial decisions to the KDE EV board and try to move things forward in terms of, of that. Uh, we try to support the board members ev in everything that has to do with various commercial activities that we are engaged in as a community and as, an e as, as the EV organization. And we also support the treasurer in communication actions related to financial topics. So we try to evaluate, evaluate the financial reports in a regular manner that are done by the treasurer. And in general, we try to help the community implement the annual budget that we all decide together. So, sure. Someone else want to pick it up from here? Roman? Yeah, and part of our work is uh, doing the uh, budget plan or drafting it. And uh, yeah, so the treasurer, which is uh, Eike, he has an initial draft and presents it to us. And then we suggest changes to it, like better phrasing, or expanding the goals that are part of a budget, and a risk analysis on what it means to spend this much. And yeah, <laughs> you're going to see the plan later. Right. All right. Uh, a couple of months ago, the financial working group convened with the new members um, to uh, review the budget plan that we did um, late last year for the year of 2019 and check out how we're doing. Um, we were looking at how Academy was coming along at the time. And um, the, thanks to our wonderful sponsors, um, the expected income was actually exceeded and this conference is quite well sponsored this year. Thank you so much. Um, it was um, a bit more expensive than last year, but we projected that in advance as well. At the time um, when we did the budget plan, we had trouble finding a location, so we were preparing the budget for having to rent a venue. We didn't have to do that in the end. However, Milan, especially around this time of year, is a relatively expensive city to hold an event in. So uh, we ended up needing that uh, increased budget, but right on the mark, so no problems there. Um, we did have money and do still have money allocated for our satellite events, La Academy and uh, conf.ke.in. Um, La Academy recently um, submitted their budget to us, which is again right on the mark of the overall EV uh, budget plan and the money allocated for them. So that looks quite good. Um, the money for conf.kde.in is still ready and available by the time Bushan finds us a venue. And we still look forward to that happening. Um, we um, have a uh, budget allocated for the next step in the documentation writer project. Um, that money is available. Um, we need to put the work into putting another job ad out uh, with the help of uh, Juan Carlos, hopefully, and moving that to the membership, getting that out there, and contracting somebody for a longer follow-up project based on the results of the pilot project. Um, I mentioned before, so I won't go into too much detail, that we're trying to improve our CVCRM installation, relate.kd.org. Um, we had budget allocated for contracting that work. Um, so far, the expenses track what we allocated for that. Um, we have no plans uh, for fundraising campaigns so far. To our knowledge, the fundraising working group uh, might illuminate that further. Um, the budget plan was conceived um, with an eye towards not needing them, uh, so that's fine. And um, we did have budget allocated for 2019 for putting on the Randa event in Switzerland again, 
As I mentioned, however, this event could not happen this year due to um, the venue in Switzerland not being available. Um, instead, what came along is hosting, co-hosting uh, Linux Application Summit with GNOME. Um, the budget needed for that sort of neatly slots into what we had allocated for Randa. So that worked out well. So far, our budget plan has proven to be quite accurate. Um, the only problem in there is that we had quite a lot of money allocated um, for the gold to spend, which not so much progress has been made on. So if you find somebody involved with the three gold selected in 2017, tell them to spend money. And <laughs> yeah, just tell them to spend money, please. And uh, how about you? Uh, so... Um we we had we had uh, yeah, sorry we had pre preparing the financial uh, part of the KDE 2018 annual report and sorry so as alluded to in the budget report once a year we uh, publish a large report on what the KDE community and KDEV has been up to in the uh, preceding year. This just got done for 2018. The link was in the board report. It will go out on our social media and dot kd.org um, soon. It's once again a very large publication. A lot of things happened in 2018 that are worth reporting. Um, the financial working group is tasked with um, providing financial information for that report. Um, this was once again way more difficult than it should have been because our accountants did not um, give us the annual overview in time. Um, that's sort of an organizational issue that we fit before and we need to um, work with them more closely to make sure those timetables align better. Um, there has been some personnel um, turnover on the side of the accountant's office and we need to sort of strengthen that relationship in the coming year. Okay, so there is uh, money allocated for the KDE.org website um, because there was so long nobody working on it and it was in kind of a bad state. And um, so this changed in the last half year, mainly thanks to Carl, as far as I know, and Jonathan Hattin on uh, working on it. So there's now a question what to do with these uh, funds. Uh, can we say how much it is or? Okay, I think it's 30,000 uh, euros. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the question is now what to do with it. And if you have good ideas, I talked to Carl about it already. Like I, fi I personally find it kind of uh, silly to now after he has done the work to say, hey, now that you are, have done the work, we don't need to spend it anymore. So there's also the question with how to uh, hire contractors or all this is uh, still a little bit up in the air. So I think we discussed it internally already, but I think it should go to the wider community to in general the question of how to uh, with contracting. And in this particular instance of web of our website, we want to talk at the website both on Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? About it. So if you have ideas uh, or if you are interested in the website, come there and we will be there, or I at least, some of you maybe as well, to talk about it. Yeah. So we received a load of money that's been earmarked for a specific project on Caligra, the one with big funds, and we now have to work out how we go about using that money. We have decided 10% should just go straight to Creta because Creta is active. It doesn't have a discussion of what part of Caligra to give it to, but it's some lawyer and financial stuff, which is complicated and I don't understand. But it means the EV has to deal with handling that, which we're still slowly in the process of doing. Well, 
what we came up together with the Quito Foundation uh, to do is that um, they, of course, mostly exist, I guess, to uh, receive money on behalf of the Quito community and put that money towards development of the Quito application. Um, they also were looking into um, hiring somebody to help with uh, their documentation and, and sort of user support efforts. And one way for us to spend that money earmarked for them would be to hire this person as the KDEV instead and um, manage that money separately and use it to pay that person. Um, this is something that the Quito Foundation is happy with. This is something that the Financial Working Group is happy with and that might well happen in the coming year. Yeah. Peters, your work. Yeah, okay. So as part of adopting further the matrix solution, uh, we've set up a, a group on matrix in order to improve our collaboration. Uh, we realized that we didn't have a tool for direct communication. We only discuss, at least in the past, through mailing lists. So this is an attempt to try to get the financial working group working more actively together through more direct con ways, let's say. Graphs. Everybody loves them. Money, 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 money. Oh my God, look at the amount of money. <laughs> and this is mostly all down to Ica, who really deserves a big round of applause for that big column. <laughs> that sounded less inappropriate in my head. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's to be noted that some of this allocated fund, some of this fund is for an allocated project, so it's not all just to spend on whatever we like. But so it can't all be spent on beer, only up to here. Unless Caligra is all about beer now. At which point I can't reach it and we'd have to get Volker to point. <laughs> and here comes a problem, our expenses are still down here where I can reach, <laughs> just. And that is a problem that needs to be fixed, and we do need to spend money, which is an odd thing to be saying. Normally, financial groups tell people to not waste money, and don't waste money, but we do need to spend, and we do need to use it, and certainly in the AGM tomorrow, we need to be really discussing fixing this. <laughs> fixing it in a useful way. <laughs> Vodka. It can be. I Oh well, uh, yeah, David says it quite correctly. Um, we're a non-profit. We are obligated to put our resources towards the goals of the organization and the purpose of the organization. Uh, right. Right, so um, this is an excellent point. Um, if you look at the budget plan, the way we drew up the budget plan was um, to say, okay, we're going to considerably increase our expenses. Um, we're going to forego the fundraising campaigns we did in, in the past. Instead, we want, um, in recognition of the fact that we can't expect these large donations every year, we want um, to get on the income side to a more reliable, sustainable income through supporting membership, contracting out CVCRM work, improving that, getting new patrons, um, so that we can sustain an increased amount of spending longer term. And um, the expenses that we put into the budget plan would allow us to keep spending that way sort of at least for three or four years, and then as our sustainable funding goes up, hopefully, then just keep doing that and just increase the scope and the scale um, of the organization. The hitch that we fit with that is just that we haven't actually spent as much money as we put into the budget plan. We made it available, but it wasn't really spent. Um, this is a sort of, it's a bit of a problem and don't misunderstand me lamenting that, but um, we don't want the board to drive things top down, right? The board can't say, goals people, spend this money on our favorite idea. Um, the most we can do is rally people around submitting ideas, uh, but the community and the membership needs to drive actually 
putting the funds to good use. Um, I think in the financial working group, the hitch that we identified is that we had all the talks, we put together the budget plan, we put out the budget plan and then stopped there. This is clearly not enough. Um, we need to do more active work in constantly reminding people that these resources are available, these ideas are there, put in the effort to actually use the resources that you have. Um, I think within the financial working group with the wonderful new members, we've come to the decision that this is what the financial working group should be about. It should take that leadership in the community and go out there, be active, engage with the goals teams, engage with the website team, and keep reminding them that this is available and that the financial working group is there to help. Um, and that the EV can help be that relationship, for example, to a contractor. If the community wants to contract somebody to get work done, we can take on the legal side and the paperwork. You figure out what to do, we help you get it done. So. Can I just add one thing to your specific point, which I'll now do with a microphone. Um, a few years ago, if we go back a slide, we also had some big, uh, I don't, not quite in the comparison, but we had some big budgets around the 2014 era. We had some canonical money and some other money, and we did the exact same thing of going, oh, we'll save this for a rainy year, for a less good year. And then it has been a problem for ages. When I joined the uh, financial working group back then, people were telling, saying the same thing, we have too much money. And now we have even more too much money. Yeah. So. Well, that summarizes this presentation. We have a lot of money. That's the takeaway right there. Do you have any more questions? I think we need to move it on. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, no questions. Oh, maybe one. <coughs> Why am I sprinting up when you have a <laughs> microphone? I'll come back down. <laughs> All the excitement. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you explain further how an, uh, a donation that allocates money to a specific group uh, of developers, in our case Caligra, is going to work uh, in practice? So uh, generally speaking, we don't, it's a hard thing to say, but we don't particularly enjoy having earmarked donations. Um, we don't have sort of a binding process to earmark a donation. It's, for lack of a better word, it's a gentle person's agreement that uh, they gave us this money with the specific purpose in mind and we've, as a community, decided to honor that, um, honor that purpose and honor that wish. So we got that money from Handshake and um, they wanted it to be put to use in Caligra. So we submitted that to the Caligra community. Do you have useful things to say? Um, when that whole thing came in, the Caligro community, uh, the developer group such as it exists, uh, got together and sat down, uh, jotted up a document describing what we would like to spend that money on. Mm -hmm. um, I need to work out who of that group is here, uh, because it would really, yeah, it would be nice to actually kind of try and wrap that up a bit. Um, it would be amazing. But yeah, <laughs> there, there are ideas, so... Yeah, um, but to answer your question specifically, um, your question was, how does it work when we receive an earmarked donation? Um, this is the extent to which it has worked so far, which is not very well because we haven't spent it. So um, we don't have a great process in place um, because in the end, people on the ground who have the money available need to put in the work to spend it. <laughs> Thank you very much, and on we go. <laughs> And uh, we have Ben and the system administrators. Then we have uh, the fundraiser team. Who else is, is the community working group giving a report? Well, I, I would have to say a sentence. OK. okay. Uh, so yeah, uh, if, and somebody told me to just say, if people are walking up and down the stairs w with the cables on, please don't step on the cables. They will die, and people will be sad. Ben. Thank you. Uh, so we'll jump straight into it considering we are running behind. So 
We did some numbers before this was done back when the report was prepared, so this was a while back, but we sued over 25 terabytes of data in June, and our systems deliver over 600,000 uh, emails every single week, so we're looking at between somewhere to three to four million emails a month. That means that we're actually considered what's known as a high volume sender, and actually if we move our email server anywhere, it actually takes about a week or so before all the, like Yahoo and AOL will actually accept all the email we were trying to send, it takes a while for it to drain through, and even Google, their systems take a while to get used to the fact that we've moved somewhere else, otherwise you just get blacklisted. So the current members of the team are myself, Nicholas, Rushan, Kenny, and there's also some other people who look after various specific services. So over the past year, we, and this took a long time, migrated 12 Drupal, 8 WordPress, 4 Civi CRM, 6 MediaWiki instances, along with a Matomo instance for looking after our website statistics, a Nextcloud instance for file exchange, our forum on PHPB, and our bug tracker, Bugzilla, all to a new shiny server because the old one was uh, Ubuntu 14.04 is out of support. Uh, that also let us shift the majority of those to PHP 7 and it's moved since then but there's now only I think the forum and I believe two wiki instances that are left on PHP 5.6 so we're nearly free of PHP 5. There's a few other sites that are still left on PHP 5 but the majority of our core workloads are now shifted off it which has improved performance and a few other bits and pieces and helps with our upgrade paths because a lot of software is actually now starting to cut off support for PHP 5 considering that the PHP community is considered the end of life. Um, we also did some upgrades to the Anongit network and we shifted the web browsers for the Git and Subversion repositories to a separate system. So it now means that when some web indexing robot decides that it's going to go and hammer them, that the Anonga network doesn't short out on people and the CI system starts giving failed builds, which was happening. Because they short themselves out if the load goes too high. Uh, we also rebuilt the way we mirrored the Neon repositories, so now that when they go and delete a repository or move things around, the system just picks it up automatically rather than them having to file a ticket because we removed from repositories and now they haven't automatically deleted themselves. Real-time communication services were also all transferred to a separate machine. They used to be co-hosted along with all those Drupal, MediaWiki, all those big PHP systems and Bugzilla on the same server. So if we wanted to reboot that for a new kernel, we had to take all the ISC and bounces and all that down too. And because of free-noted throttling, it can take up to about two or so hours for our BNC to reconnect every single person who's on it because there's something like 100 accounts on there. So that's actually alleviated a lot of pain. We can now reboot that system without having to worry. We're going to knock everyone else out, everyone out for like two hours. And we brought with it some updates to Prosody and a few of our couple IRC bots too. Those people who see Screamer or Pursuivant in any of the channels will have seen them around. Alexar also it moved home too because it needed to upgrade, and we. Once again, we built that on a modern distribution, and we also resurrected a whole bunch of old stuff for what was newstuff.kd.org, which was the second generation of Get Hot New Stuff, I believe it was, because there were some applications still relying on that, and that functionality basically been dead since we killed Commit Filter sometime last year. So that's now back up, so at least in static form, so those applications continue to work for people who are relying on them still, and hopefully at some point all those resources will shift onto store.key.org so we can actually just shut that off as well. Because Get Hot New Stuff version 1, we still host that as static copies too. The continuous integration system also got a big overhaul. Jenkins Jobs got moved into a big folder tree system so you can now go through and find just your project and set up an RSS feed or something just for your project or just have one quick link to see this is the status of my jobs, both master and stable branch. And there was a whole bunch of version upgrades, and the Jenkins master instances also shifted to a new server. I'm not going backwards. GitLab, so that's probably the biggest kind of item that's kind of come up. Following feedback at last year's Academy, we had a look at GitLab itself, did a bit of a technical evaluation, and then we did a practical evaluation with a selection of projects that we asked the community basically 
if you meet these criteria, please stick your hand up. Some people did. And they, they gave GitLab a good solid testing. We gathered a whole bunch of feedback from that and then launched into a kind of discussion with the broader community. Following the consensus on that was that we should migrate from our current fabricator system for review to GitLab. Most new projects, in fact, I'd say all bar actually anything that's gone into frameworks or applications or Plasma, everything in extra gear and playground, they've all gone immediately to GitLab. None of them have actually been going into Fabricator. The only reason the, new, the p things in applications, frameworks, and Plasma are in not going into GitLab is because it causes issues for the release projects process for those. So we're keeping it kind of separate for now. At the moment, we're still in the process of finalising what you're going, what we need to get in place to move everyone to GitLab. So there's a few bits and pieces around a non-Git because that has to be fully rebuilt, and identity synchronisation. So when you change your email address or we make someone a developer, or something, anything like that, that it just syncs across instantaneously and just is seamless. Because at the moment, that's actually a huge kind of issue. Because if it's not, we have to go manually add people to the developer group in GitLab at the same time as the normal kind of developer process, which is everything that's on there. And we're going to transfer responsibility for SSH key management from identity to GitLab because it makes no sense to have build a whole bunch of synchronization stuff for that when there's only really one other system that needs SSH keys, and that is Subversion, and we can just pull them from GitLab through its API. So there's no point duplicating the logic there. Where we need help, we've yet to find a solution to api.k.org. I believe there was a discussion on the mailing lists about maybe one or two months ago. It's fragile at the moment, the existing setup. The old style scripts which have been carried over from like KD3, KD4, and actually the templates for that still come from the old KD libs repository. We had to make a fix to those somewhat recently, which I, which I did. Uh, we, we really need to solve that one because at the moment, you have to go hunting around on the server, dig through a log, find out, oh, it's dying because of this, or this link needs to be updated because of this, and it's over here in this repository, which you'd never expect it to be in. So if anyone would like to work on that, please give us a wave. Key goals for the coming year, I want to complete the migration to GitLab. We want to get everything across. We want to basically static eyes, fabricator, or shut it down completely, depending on how we go. There are approximately 90 websites that are left on one single Ubuntu 14.04 system. At the time of writing, that was true. There's now only one website left on that, and it, that is www.k.org. They've all now been moved off onto a new 18.04 system, and identity continues to be a critical issue. The number of websites, we, the number of user accounts we have in there now is actually is continuing to cause open LDAP serious scalability problems. Any questions? Unfortunately, we don't have time for more questions, and we will head over to Les, and you are available for questions after this, I guess. Thank you. Hello, I will be very quickly. Uh, most of the stuff that we are doing, I keep talking here on the on the EV report. We are kind of lazy on our goals because we got these large donations and we didn't make the fundraising campaign. But we are trying with Ixion to fix the PayPal issues and we are hoping to poke, uh, poke here on PayPal and our, our platforms to see if we can f help them to do this faster. Uh, uh, coordinate the production and authority of promotion material for fundraising campaigns. We need more ideas, I think, to get uh, another ways to do to get money besides the fun our fundraising campaign. So we are hosting a both on Tuesday, Thursday. I don't recall correctly. And uh, anyone that wants to discuss or join the fundraising, please come. Uh, execution of fundraising campaigns, we are not doing that. Improve technical infrastructure about the websites of fundraising. I have made a new fundraising website, but I'm waiting for the, uh, the issues of PayPal being fixed so we can launch that. Uh, members, all these people. 
last year is just the support for PayPal in working with Exim on CVC RM. Uh, we are not as active as we would like. The lesson learned is that this needs to be changed. And we have taken some steps to do that. We have a Telegram chat. We are going to start a monthly meeting and the Fabricator board. And they're both here on Academy so we can structure the rest of that. So we need help if anyone, anyone go, wants to join us because the active members are me, Alex, Kenny, and the scholars. So come together. And for now, we have improvements on the web presence, support for fundraise efforts for lies if needed. Uh, fabric use Fabricator, and this is my idea. I think that this both is on Thursday. Is I create KDE community structure to mind map because I think for me that I'm community for since 2015. I would like to have a macro view of the community, see what is inside. So we have are having a both that I probably will have a lot of posts so we can build a mind map of all these is, is structure in KDE so we can have a macro view and uh, go get that together with the goals and see what lessons we can learn from that and show people what we have here so they can track themselves easily inside the community. So this is another buff you can check on the academy schedule. And if you need to talk to us, we are on that email. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then a short sentence from Valerie. There's not a whole lot we can talk about publicly. Uh, we handed, handled maybe a case a month. We worked pretty closely with sysadmin. Um, some of the trolls are pretty easy to deal with. The sysadmins just killed them on our system and we don't have to put up with them anymore. What's much tougher is people we love getting into disagreements and miscommunication. Uh, we really want you to continue to come to us when you find a pain point because that's what we want to do is make things pleasant, a pleasant work environment for everybody and so we can all have fun together. Thank you very much. Speaking of pleasant.